Hello everyone and welcome to the 10th episode in the series of things you may have missed in The Witcher 3. If you've missed any of the previous ones where we covered most of the base game, make sure to check the playlist in the description below. In this episode, however, we shall be looking at the first expansion of The Witcher 3, Hearts of Stone, which may in fact be my favorite part of the game, perhaps alongside the main story in Velen. Touch me more, boy. Touch me more. But now's not the time for that conversation, we're here to go over the 20 details you may have missed in it. The list is rather long, so I'll try to be brief, which rarely works, but anyway, let us start with the blood ritual to summon the ghost of Vladimir. After you succeed, there are several remarks he makes, which trigger when you take him to different places and do different things. For example, he asks you about the life of a witcher and roach when you exit the crypt, he tells you a story about the windmills, he comments about fighting things, and even if you choose to rob the graves of his ancestors. Why do you pour through my ancestors' bones? On your way, leave the dead to rest in peace. But to me, the best part, and the one that's relatively easy to miss, is this. When taken to this location, Vlod will comment on the unfortunate fate of the local elder woman. A small graveyard and a white chapel. I know this place. The elder woman hanged herself from a dried out bough. When you investigate the place, you'll stumble upon a pond and three wraiths will appear around it to fight you. Then, after you defeat them, you can venture deeper into the abandoned chapel where a greater wraith shows up and you have to destroy it as well before you finally stumble upon something rather grim. It's called Edbert's Farewell Note and it tells the story of him and his beautiful wife Ornesta. The two loved each other and lived happily until their first child was born. The girl was just as beautiful as her mother, but the wife wasn't very happy about it, it seemed. Then sometime later, two more girls were born, both fair as angels, as the note says. And it was then when the mother really sank into madness. She was getting old and began more and more to blame her daughters for her fading beauty. She even refused to feed them at one point because she thought they had fed on her beauty and her youth. And then one night, the father woke up to see an empty house. He went out and followed a trail to the same fountain that we saw the three wraiths in the beginning. And he found his three daughters, butchered and mutilated, and in the distance, his wife, with a rope around her neck. She once again said that she had lost all she cherished because of her daughters, and then hanged herself. The note ends with the father hinting at the fact that he too will end his life soon. And finally, he begs the gods for forgiveness for himself and for his beloved Ornesta. Okay, for number two, let's move on to something a little more cheerful and see what happens if you try to take Vlod too far away from the wedding, despite him insisting that you shouldn't do it. Geralt, old chap, mind turning your ass around and going back to the wedding? I was to have a bit of fun, not a bloody walkabout. Keep this up. And I'll get soul legs is all. Not quite what old Gid asked for. Fine, we'll go back. And speaking of what happens if you don't go where you're supposed to, you probably know this, but just in case, this scene takes place only if you avoid meeting Gontor Odim at the crossroads and try to go to old Gird directly. We were to meet at the crossroads, yet you show up here. Frankly, I was afraid you'd give me another memento. Hmm, interesting. I helped you find Yennefer, then I made possible your escape, so you ought to feel grateful. Even the worst scum feel an inner compunction to repay their debts of gratitude. But not you. I was subjected to mutations, stripped me of all kinds of human compunctions. Hmm. Interesting bit of information. We shall have to discuss it at length later. Thing you may have missed number three. We're going back to the wedding because we're not done with it yet. Um, another detail that may escape you here is that if you choose to go and play Gwent with the halflings before everything else, assuming that you lose and don the ass years, all other people from all other events will notice them and will have a unique line or two 
about you wearing them. I'm all in. <laughs> I never knew you to be such a gambler. You shall see many new sides of me this night, my dear. Many large sides. <laughs> Those ears. You look, uh, interesting. A witcher with ass ears chasing swine. <laughs> Better than a goddamn circus. What's that you say, peasant? Me? Uh, nothing. Good. Look, mutations don't just turn them barren as a mule, they give them an ass's ears to boot. <laughs> Must have some other horse part hidden in his trousers. Ugh, they sure named it right. Calm yourself, Dumpling. Master Witcher's here now. Perhaps he can aid us. Ow! The man's got ass ears. He's the first seat to help himself. Oh, such ears might be high fashion in his part. Oh, I doubt that. Changed your mind, my nymph? Won't you ever leave me be? Stay out of the cellar over long. Cobwebs will seal it shut. Luckily, I have a great broom. Ah, go nag another! Alright, number four is brought to you by a faithful viewer of mine by the name of Gaming Solves My Issues. A wonderful name. Uh, I believe they are a female, so I'll refer to her as she. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So she shared a great detail that I never thought was possible. Once again, it's part of the wedding and it's about the dog and the fire eater quest. Turns out if you insult the fire eater and he resolves to leave, you can not only just let him go, but also attempt to entertain the guests in his stead by juggling. Hmm, I can't help but wonder, must it be a fire eater who performs? What if instead there was, oh, I don't know, a juggler? Just where would we find a juggler at this hour? But say you did, would that do as a replacement for the fire sniffler? Well, I suppose it might. Then I shall perform. You? First I've heard of a juggling witcher. Today I'm no ordinary witcher. In my youth I had a great many friends among circus folk. They taught me well. I shall gladly save you from your troubles. Well, if, the, if that's the case, I'll, I'll announce the performance. My first witcher contract didn't turn out as I'd hoped, yet I still had a cracking time. I wager none here's ever seen a juggling witcher. Gather round, all, to behold a great wonder, a juggling witcher, the one and only. Look carefully, Shawnee. Ever seen such deft hands? I would love to show you what else they can do. Turns out he's not at all bad at it. Okay, at number five we have something that I initially didn't plan on including, but at least two people commented or sent me messages about it, so I thought, why not? Um, during Shani's romance scene, in addition to her throwing up all over you if you let her drink too much, there is another curious thing that you may not have paid too much attention to, and it's that what she says to Geralt, as they set sail, is a clear reference to the ending of the DLC and how Gontor Odim tricks all geared. <sighs> Row me to the moon. Gotta fly to get to the moon. <laughs> You're dead wrong. <laughs> Look, it's right there, in the middle of the lake. <laughs> and that's all I had for number five, moving on to the next, uh, but still on the topic of Shani. This takes place sometime after the wedding ends. What are you doing? Not exactly sure how long, but it turns out that if you visit Vladimir's crypt once again, you find flowers at his grave, ones that were probably left there by Shani. Flowers on Vladimir's grave? Columbines from Giverny. Wonder who brought them. Could Shani be missing Vlad? Oh, I'm a medic. I tend to know what I'm doing when I prescribe something. Hope Vladimir's antics weren't too annoying. Uh, a peculiar man. Ghost, true. But I found him... likable. <laughs> Wager he was a real hoot when he was alive. I think deep down Vladimir wasn't a bad person. And I think she saw that. Let us move on to the House of Borsodi now. Not sure if this is something people didn't notice, but the prodigal brother is actually attending the auction, at least at first. 
He can be seen hanging around the stairwell here. If you look closely at his face, you'll see that that's indeed the same guy. It's probably how he knew to wait for Geralt as soon as he got kicked out. How exactly did he manage to get in and out unnoticed? Remains a bit of a mystery though. Hey! Hey! Oh, and speaking of getting in, did you know that a certain dialogue choice can make one of the Redanian guards sing? And that is also a reference to a medieval Polish anthem, as far as I'm aware, except Redania is replaced with Polonia. Make an exception. Threats don't scare me. I've sworn to serve Redania till death do us part, and I'll keep my oath with a song on my lips. Careful, bugger means it. God, eh, mata, Redania, Alright, now for number 8, something that I actually do very often, you can refuse to take part in the auction, which results in a cutscene where Geralt just eats and drinks while the others are bidding. Esteemed ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hereby open the auction. Lot number 1. 500 going twice, going thrice, sold! Do I see 300? Who will give me three? Ah, 300 from the monocled gentleman. I congratulate you on your successful acquisitions and invite you to partake of the refreshments during the intermission. So, how goes it, Geralt? Didn't I find it arksome, my hope? Of course I did, as always with sophisticated company. But it was about what I expected, so... And after all, I can't avoid talking about the items you buy during the auction, so you probably know that the bird can be disassembled, which gives you a key to a treasure, and the painting can be sold in exchange for a cool-looking trophy in a jar, which may be my favorite, actually. But did you know these two things? Ah! Oh, Loud! Oh. First, and that's probably the easier one, that the trophy came to the merchant's possession from Gaten, or Guyton, um, the witcher from the Wolf and the Cat DLC, who slaughtered the entire village? I guess others refused to pay him for that trophy as well. And the second one is that Van Roe, the author of the painting, is actually Iris, Olgierd's wife. During the heist later on, there is a note you can stumble upon which reveals that Van Gogh is actually her alias. Okay, we're halfway through the list and my voice is beginning to die, but uh, let's keep this going with Thing You May Have Missed number 10. So, we mentioned the brother is waiting for you after you get kicked out, but did you know that he has a different reaction based on whether or not you beat the guards during the fist fight right before you talk to him? Here's what he says if you won. Law says if you see someone hurt, you should summon a medic. Law doesn't say how fast, though. So you can sit tight a while. Seems true what they say. Sword or no sword, a witcher brings gore. Not in the mood for your peasant wisdom. Who the hell are you? And here's what he says if you lost. Your swords, master. Just need you to sign here. F fuck you. Mm. Depositor. Refused to confirm receipt. Signed, Sergeant Figner. A pleasant day to you. Seems true what they say. When it's many against one, even a witcher's done. Not in the mood for your peasant wisdom. Who the hell are you? If all goes well, dare say I'm your partner. Don't need any partners. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, before we're through with the auction house, I have one final thing to mention. I made some videos about it in the past, and that's the fact that you can meet Vesemir's former lover while he's still alive, and she has a completely different reaction to it. We even learned that since they parted, it seems he hasn't ever had another relationship. And... Hmm, 
Did he ever find... a... a mate? No. Haven't seen him with a woman in five decades. Me and the other witchers, we often wondered what his story was. A pity. A pity our story didn't end differently. I might have... I should have ridden out after him. Please don't mention me when next you see him. You can even talk to him about the encounter before the Battle of Kaer Morhen, which, I must say, makes his passing even worse. Ran into an old friend of yours, Countess Mignol. Huh? Impossible. Where? Auction house in Oxenfurt. Love letters conveyed by a governess. Trysts in garden nooks. You scampering out a window. Ha! <laughs> Last person I imagined dabbling in that sort of thing. Hmm. You might find it hard to believe, but... I was young too once. Well, younger. She still lives in Oxenfurt. No itch to go there? See her? Later, maybe. Once it's over. Once things are calm again. For number 12, we are going into the basement, where the planning of the heist takes place. It's another tiny detail, but one that I didn't notice in my first playthrough. So, if you have a look at the wall in the basement there, you'll see the faces of the potential cooperators for the heist. And among them, although it has been scratched, is that of our dear darling Triss Merigold. Can't quite imagine Triss taking part in the heist, although she did need the money to fund the escape of the mages from Novigrad, as we can tell from the Masquerade quest, so who knows? Now, before I proceed, I have a confession to make. I decided to leave the small details of the actual heist for a separate video, because there are just too many. Um, there are details based on the way you recruit each one of the members, um, based on the combination of members you recruit, there are different banters in the basement. Different people will react differently based on how you resolve the hostage situation. Then different people will side with different brothers based on which one you side with. And then different people will do different things based on how you resolve the situation after you chose to side with one of the brothers. Uh, and so on. So it's just, it's too much. It's gonna be a separate video. So we're moving on. Now, in number 13, I'd like to mention the missing halfling apprentice of the quest called Without a Trace. The clues will initially lead you to an old couple in the middle of nowhere, and if you aren't inquisitive enough, you may think that that's all there is to the quest. However, if you investigate further and go behind the house, you'll find a hidden basement, and in it, the half-eaten corpse of the halfling. No pun intended. From here, you'll have to either kill them or make them promise that they'll abandon cannibalism for good. Three things can happen to them after some time. First, if you spare them and tell the quest giver the truth, he'll pay you but he'll also vow to seek revenge. And indeed, upon revisiting the place later, you'll find monsters eating their corpses and Geralt will say... Whoa, Herbalist wasn't joking. Second, if you kill them and tell the truth, later on you'll stumble upon the same scene, yet Geralt's comment is different. Devoured by necrophages. Poetic justice at its best. And finally, if you let them live and lie to the halfling, upon returning to the place you'll find that the wife had died of hunger. A rather grim quest, regardless of how you approach it. She's dead. Grew weak, weaker. When, like a spark, devils take your soul. And while on the topic of grim things, let us mention Gontor Odim, and the fact that he shows up all over the place and is constantly keeping tabs on you in various disguises. Now sadly, I personally was only able to notice him twice, walking around the wedding and as one of the Redanian crossbowmen during the heist, this gentleman, however, made a video showcasing even more of his appearances, so let me take the liberty and play the rest of them. There could even be more, and if anyone's aware of any, please share them in the comment section. 
and also there is a link to his channel in the description. Ok, for number 15 we dive even deeper into Gontor Odim and the conversation we have about him with the blind professor. First off, I love that piece of dialogue. It still gives me the creeps when I play through it. Following that conversation, I can think of two things you may have missed. The first one is that if you extinguish the candles surrounding the pentagram, you'll hear an angry, ghostly sound or something. I believe I showed this way back when I used to stream on Twitch. And the second thing is the story from the professor's journal, which tells us of the horrible way that Gontaro Dim had been torturing and manipulating the poor old man over the past year while he was inside the circle. For the first month, the professor had nothing but nightmares. He feared sleep, and then suddenly he had a dream of having a daughter. She was about 10 years old and it felt so real, especially the true love he felt for her. He began dreaming of her every night and it was as though he had a whole new life in his dreams, where he was a father, he had a daughter who loved him and he was happy, and so he no longer feared sleep, in fact he longed for it to come. So after a while he thought that was a sign that Gontaro Dim had given him peace, that all the bad has passed and he even began thinking of leaving the circle. Now, as soon as that thought crossed his mind, his daughter died, a rather awful death in his dreams. She was begging him to save her while he stood helpless, and it was horrible. This event left him a broken man, and he was constantly tormented by visions until he finally died. Okay, let's talk about something more cheerful now, like why Siri exposes her breasts. I've mentioned this many times, so probably everybody knows of it, but I just can't leave it out of this video. And it's the fact that you can ask several people about Gontor Odim's mark. So far, I was able to discover four individuals, Siri, Rages, Triss and Yennefer. Let me play a quick compilation for you. Listen, think you could help me with his mark? It's driving me crazy. Oh, Geralt, what have you gotten yourself into now? Long story. Can you get rid of this thing? Afraid not. And I doubt anyone else will be able to either. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Folk give me strange looks anyway. Guess I ought to be used to it. Listen, this mark. Can you do anything about it? I can scratch it if it itches, but I fear that's all. I'm not joking, Yen. Neither am I. These symbols. It's ancient, powerful magic. I've no notion how to remove them. Damn it. You're still one of the prettiest witches around in my book. Second only to Lambert. The uh, mark on my face. Is it noticeable? Hard in the eyes? <laughs> A bit. But you can't let it bother you. You know, folk would stare at the scar on my cheek, always. It used to upset me greatly. And? I started undoing one shirt button more. Problem solved. I should go. All right. My utterances are indeed towards the taciturn, for even the longest discourse would not allow me to explain to my interlocutor any issue of this purview satisfactorily. But while we're at it, be so good and explain to me how it was you acquired that startling scar on your face. Forgive me for being direct, but it's tormenting me for some time now. Uh, long story, actually. Let's just say I struck up with some unsavory folk. No worries, though. I'll get out of it. And that's about it. Let's proceed to number 17. Oh, but before we do, let me take just one more moment of your time and ask you to like this video if you've enjoyed it thus far and perhaps to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so. I would also like to thank all my supporters on Patreon and YouTube for helping make all of this possible. Thank you very much and now off we go to number 17. We asked Siri about the mark, now it's time to ask Gontor Odim about her. Chances are you are aware of this, but like the previous one, I just couldn't leave it out. So if you haven't yet found her, and you let Gontor Odim take Olgir's soul, ah! your soul belongs to me. You can ask the Man of Glass about your daughter. He claims that what matters is not whether or not you'll find her, because you will, 
but rather what you'll do later, and he basically gives you hints on how to avoid the worst ending. Alright, here goes number 18. Hey you! Post papers! During this lovely lady's quest, you'll get the chance to axie a couple of guards and make them count to 100. If you stay there and wait, they'll actually go all the way from 1 to 100. And when they're done, they even attack you. 5, 6, 18, 19, 10, 10. You mean 20, idiot? Gods! 80 fucking 4, 80 fucking 5, 97, 98. 99, a hundred. One fucking hundred. What now? No fucking clue, brother. Lippy fucker! Get him! <laughs> now for number 19, we'll be counting money instead, because if you haven't reached 30k, or was it 40k, you may have missed the tax collector. A rather funny guy with an equally funny piece of dialogue you meet in Oxenford. I believe he's part of the Hearts of Stone expansion, right? Anyway, he asks you a series of questions which all refer to different activities that players resort to to make a lot of crowns. Like killing cows in White Orchard, selling pearls or plundering people's homes. So if you admit to these deeds, he'll ask you to pay an income tax of 1,000 crowns at Vivaldi's bank. Vimy, could you do me a favor? Oh, I fear not. You can't? You see, I've been told you owe back taxes. That means I cannot provide you any services till you take care of that wee fucker. <sighs> Fine, I'll just pay it. Jeez. Not portals were bad. I think I detest taxes even more. If you do not pay it, you won't be able to use the bank's services, though you probably don't need them if you're rich. And if you say that you haven't done any of this, he'll give you a diploma. It adds up to the crown. I say, good sir, you are exceptionally upstanding. It'd be rude to disagree. In these times, such civic virtue is a rarity. It must be commended. Rewarded. Here. Well, what's this? A diploma. I bestow on you the title of taxpayer in good standing. I'd suggest you frame it. Hang it in a place of honour. Congratulations! And speaking of Vivaldi the banker, did you know he used to look differently when the expansion launched? For some reason he got a new unique model. Um... But I think I kind of preferred his old one, to be honest. Number 20 is this pig. Shit. Show me what you got. Bolt between its ribs. It was being hunted. Something went horribly wrong, though. Tracks are clear, leading to the woods. Mm-hmm. This little piggy ate raw and steaming human flesh. Oh, I'm not even sure if this pig is part of the Hearts of Stone expansion, so let me give you something else. Perhaps the things you can bury with Iris. So, as far as I know, you can choose one of three things. Her sketchbook, her painting, and her hairbrush. And to each, she has a unique reaction when you finally conquer her greatest fear. Uh, which, by the way, I think was a great way to tell her story. Um, starting from Olgierd, being the one who combats that which she fears, and ending with he himself becoming Iris's greatest fear. Uh, but anyway, so in the middle of that conversation, she can say one of three things depending on which item you buried alongside her body. And here are the lines. For the painting... When you placed the painting on my grave, I remembered the day of my marriage. For the hairbrush... When you place the hairbrush on my grave, I remember brushing my hair while Olgird watched in silence. And for the sketchbook. When you place the sketchbook on my grave, I remembered learning to draw my husband's face. Now before we end this video, let me quickly address three things. 
and these are things that people have claimed are rare details in Hearts of Stone through comments or private messages, um, but actually aren't. First, someone commented about how you're able to loot a red robe and boots next to Iris's bed if you go back to the house after you take the rose. While that is true that you can get those items, you actually can loot them at any point, even before you buried her body, so they're always there. The second thing that turns out to be false is that Lambert apparently has a unique reaction if you have your swords enchanted with the uh, Zeracanian runecrafter's rune words from Hearts of Stone. Well, I tested it and he says the exact same thing he always does. And Geralt indeed mentions a Zeracanian master in his response, but it's not the guy you meet in the expansion. He says that even before the release of Hearts of Stone. Well, well, color me impressed. Where'd you learn them tricks? It's an art. Learned it from this old master down in Zeracania. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Save that tale for your next sorceress. And the third bit is that during this scene where Gontoro Dim stops time, he will at least at certain points, stare into the camera, breaking the fourth wall, so to speak. But as far as I can tell, this may just be a coincidence from the way his eyes are animated. I went through the scene several times, and I must admit I didn't see anything too convincing. This one time I shall spare you, and not grant your wish. All who have learned my true name are now either dead, or have met an even worse fate. Alright, and with that, we're done. A bit of a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know whether or not you did, also did you miss any of these things, and if I also forgot to mention something cool, make sure to comment about that as well. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned and be good. Okay, is anyone still here? I finished editing this video and then by accident I found another detail that I've never seen before. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna slap it here in the end. It turns out there is a small scene that plays if you begin the quest to fish for Shani's shoe during the wedding, but change your mind and try to do something else before you've recovered it. Here's what happens. Did you find my shoe? If not, I think you should come back and look for it. In the lake. Oh, never expected Silp could conquer a man like you. Alas, I couldn't raise it up. For the first time in my life, I swear, Shani. Oh, devastating for you. I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm left without a shoe. Never fear. I shall retrieve it. Or drown trying. Okay, the end. Yes, Geralt. You know, I've been wanting to ask you something. Ask me now. Just curious. You ever play Gwent? Oh, Geralt. Geralt. Geralt.